Leg day means different things to different people. Big legs, strong legs, flexible legs, or cardio as a means of training. Others choose to do only upper body exercise, skipping leg day for reasons you'll soon learn. Training the legs doesn't have to be all or nothing. The internet loves extremes. You're either going balls to the wall, hammering the lower body like a beast, or skipping leg day. You've either got Tom Platt's legs or suffering from chicken leg syndrome. Having a respectable level of strength and size in the lower body isn't difficult or time consuming. Smart program design coupled with consistency is all you need to get results. Simply work out the legs with less volume and intensity. Progress will be slower, but it will be sustainable. You don't have to give 10 out of 10 effort to legs where you can't walk for a week and hate the process. This leads to a feeling of dread and skipped leg workouts. Instead, patiently overload with exercises you enjoy. Find the sweet spot of how much and how hard to train based on auto-regulation. Listen to the signs and symptoms your body is sending and adjust leg day accordingly. Doing the minimum effective dose on leg day is more holistic than doing nothing at all. If you want freakishly strong legs, powerlifting is a nice medium. The squat and deadlift are classic compounds which can be challenging for life. Strength is specific to the exercises and rep ranges that we train. By doing low reps on squats and deadlifts, performance will improve on these lifts. Powerlifting is a reliable and repeatable way of measuring lower body progress. Testing 1RM is an objective way of seeing how your strength stacks up against others. Now to become a jack of all trades, master of none, juggle multiple leg day goals simultaneously. For myself, I find a hybrid approach satisfying. Just understand that chasing multiple goals impacts the rate and amount of progress due to interference effects. You won't become world class in any one area, but you will become damn capable across the board. If you want big muscular legs, time is best spent at the gym doing hard resistance exercise. Training will consist of the five to 30 rep range close to muscular failure. You'll be doing on average 10 to 20 sets per week for the hamstrings, glutes, quads, and calves. Frequency will be around one to three times per week, depending on how important leg size is for you. Compound exercise with free weights and machines will serve the majority of your workouts. Isolation will also be used to exhaust lagging body parts and further stress your physique to grow. If you want movement mastery of your body, Calisthenics is a respectable leg day option. There's nothing magical at play. We're simply using our body weight as the resistance load. Many people find this an enjoyable way of exercising. Fun is an important principle for adherence. If body weight exercises make you consistently do leg day, that's a massive win. You won't be maximizing muscle mass or absolute strength by doing lower body calisthenics, given the limitations for progressive overload. However, you can still train the major movement patterns with body weight leg day, making them useful for home workouts or while traveling. The average person wants a body which looks balanced. Having a huge upper body and skinny legs look strange. Leg hypertrophy is proof the person puts effort into their full body symmetry from head to toe. Both women and men alike find a thick and juicy lower body attractive. So if you're looking to turn heads, don't skip leg day. Heavier legs adds difficulty to calisthenics, but doesn't make it impossible. We have countless case studies of heavyweights performing crazy feats of strength. These people consistently open my eyes to the potential of the human body. It's motivating to see stereotypes being broken people overcoming the odds and still having freakish performance. They aren't making excuses for their suboptimal relative strength due to being heavier and having big legs. The reality is upper body strength must rise to match the increased body weight, which is a form of progressive overload in calisthenics. Accepting the disadvantages and overcoming them is considered holistic versus having an incomplete body. Yes, it's going to take far more time and effort to achieve calisthenics mastery, but juggling multiple goals is rewarding because of the added difficulty that comes from this decision. From personal experience, there's nothing like walking around with an aesthetic physique and surprising people. Being able to do calisthenics while looking like a bodybuilder gets huge respect from the general public. For better or worse, calisthenics and complete aesthetics piques interest in the bodyweight culture. There's less snarky remarks from people saying, oh yeah, I could do that too if I had chicken legs. There's less stigma and more buy-in from the general population, given how society values looks. Full body aesthetics and body weight mastery is seen as the best of both worlds, looking strong and doing cool stuff. The mental toughness gained from leg day is undeniable. Being able to push the comfort zone on legs develops character like nothing else. This mental fortitude can be applied towards your upper body goals and life. Going to failure on pull-ups feels like nothing in comparison to working legs to the max. A hard set of deadlifts 
primes your brain to tolerate the daily challenges at work, school, or personal relationships. Improving mental resilience by doing leg day is worthwhile in and of itself. Now, if your goal is to become the strongest you possibly can at calisthenics, skipping leg day makes sense. On social media, people want to see the best in the world doing crazy stuff. For the calisthenics athlete, performance comes above everything. Upper body strength is the number one priority as this is what is judged and respected by the culture. For the calisthenics specialist, they don't value lower body as it compromises recovery makes upper body exercises harder and takes time away from their goals. Calisthenics is all about relative strength. Pound for pound, how much force can we exert in relation to our total mass? Body weight is the constant underlying performance on any calisthenics movement. All else equal, lighter legs and less total body weight is going to make someone stronger at moving their body against gravity. This is why you find skills easier when cutting and harder when bulking. Body weight being a factor is why top calisthenics performers also have low body fat levels in order to maximize relative strength. Bigger legs makes body weight exercise more difficult in a few ways. In moves like front lever and planche, our shoulders have to create more force to counteract the weight of the legs. People skip leg day because having big leg muscles is just like having ankle weights strapped on. It's dead weight. A muscular lower body worsens leverages too. It lowers center of mass. This means we have to lean further and work harder to hold statics. In the defense of leg day skippers, the strength to body weight ratio becomes optimal. There's less non-functional weight. By avoiding lower body workouts, only useful muscle mass is added to the upper body, which directly helps in calisthenics. When it comes to general sports, we think differently about the body. Cyclists aren't criticized for skipping arm day. We don't judge strong men because they can't run a marathon. Gymnasts aren't trolled for having skinny legs in a competitive sense. At the end of the day, haters are gonna hate. You can never win everyone's approval. Leg day comes at a cost for recovery. Given the leg muscles that are the largest in the body, the fatigue is real. We can all relate to feeling completely wiped out after a high volume, high intensity leg day. The systemic stress impacts our full body and the nervous system gets compromised as a result. Despite leg day using different muscles to calisthenics, full body fatigue explains why subsequent upper body workouts can feel weaker. This leg day dilemma becomes even more of a factor the stronger you are. Heavier weights equals higher stress for advanced people. Training legs becomes a programming consideration too. It's another day during the week that you could spend working upper body or resting. It's not all negative. Leg day has the benefit of releasing that ever important testosterone. The growth hormone response isn't like you're injecting PEDs by doing some squats, but the muscle building benefits for the full body isn't negligible by any means. The added calorie expenditure and muscle mass has advantages for metabolism too. By doing leg day, you can enjoy eating more calories and have improved insulin sensitivity thanks to the extra muscle mass. There's no denying that legs are an important part of being human. Nearly every activity of daily living uses the lower body in some way or another. We're constantly squatting, hinging, bending, and twisting to move around. In the interest of longevity, legs play a key role in staying independent as we age. Having enough strength and muscle mass in the lower body reduces falls risk in the elderly, staving off a major cause of mortality. Just working the upper body is not enough. The legs get neglected and we're missing out on the health gains. Resistance training for the lower body also improves bone health, an important consideration as we age beyond our prime. Concerning lower body injuries, a well-rounded routine for the legs may help with prevention. Pain is multifactorial and complex but if you're consistently getting low back, hip or knee pain and you never do any lower body exercise, it may be worth it. If you want flexible legs, stretching through a full range of motion is your homework. The saying use it or lose it is something to embrace concerning flexibility. If you want to move freely, resistance while stretching builds strength at length. This can be done by using body weight to move through range or adding weights to stretches. There's so many stretching exercises that you can do making it possible to dedicate a lifetime to improving flexibility. The Jefferson Curl is useful for touching your toes and beyond, making the hamstrings more supple. The Taylor's Pose increases groin flexibility, helping to open up the hips for side splits. The Couch Stretch targets the stubborn hip flexors, making it easier to get into front splits. Choosing your goals and values is most important. Training with clarity is the antidote for being bullied by other people's opinions. Leg strength, muscle mass, flexibility, or a combination may be your motivation. If skipping leg day is a sacrifice you make, own it. In closing, leg day is ultimately your decision. Just respect what other people decide to do with their body.